Hey, yo, what is good, fam? It's your boy, Josh Knight, and we're back again. Back again. Back again with another episode of the Night Review. Uh, this is episode two. <laughs> This is the show where I come and I talk about a bunch of shit that you may or may not care about, but you tuned in, so you might just care about it. Or maybe you just care about me. And I appreciate that, because I care about you. <laughs> All right, so here we are. Um, today is Friday. It's another Friday. Oh! Bruh. Bruh. It's Friday the 13th. That's crazy. I don't know how you guys feel about uh, like uh, superstitions and myths and all that. I don't really, I, I might have some, but I don't really put too much into Friday the, to the 13th. I don't, uh, I didn't even uh, realize it was coming up, honestly. Uh, but yeah, here we are at the show. Um, this episode might be a little bit shorter. I'm on like a schedule today. I'm always on schedule, but today my my time available is a little bit less than I would like to do this, but I still gotta get it done because I'm trying to be consistent with this shit. Everything in life is consistency, so remember that. Uh, but here we are, episode two. Um, like I said, it's gonna be a little bit of a short show, but fuck ye. First up, music, man. Music, always. Uh, I hope y'all been doing well. And taking care of yourselves out there. Um, it's getting, it's getting spooky out there. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna switch up the vibe a little bit on this episode. Last episode I did Uzi, and I know I said I was gonna come back this episode and do a little bit of a deep dive, but I think I'm gonna save that for next episode because there's this, uh, there's this project that I've just been stuck on. Uh, I may or may not get in trouble with you too. <laughs> We're playing some of these, but we're not gonna, like I said, we won't play the whole thing, because I've already heard these. I would, honestly, these are just kind of like, for y'all, uh, to, 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 to give y'all a, a little, a little, a little peep. Um, but like I said, YouTube man may not fuck with that. Um, uh, My Lux is a story for Anyway. Yo, spooky out there. <laughs> uh, but it's a dope ass project. Uh, it's a different vibe. Uh, and I want y'all to check it out. All right. This, uh, this music, this music, uh, this artist is called Child. C H I. <laughs> C H I I I L D, three eyes. Okay, and uh, his project that he that, um, that he just put out is um, okay. <clears throat> the name of the project is Synthetic Soul. So we just gonna do a little run through real quick. Like I said, I work with all of these, and this is more of the R and B side. You know what I mean? Um, like no hip hop really, but this I still fuck with it because it's good music. Uh, let's uh, let's play the shit here. I'm gonna play. Uh, so that what I'll do, I like I said, <clears throat> probably won't play all of it. I'll probably play two or three of my favorites, and then like the the most popular sh uh, on here, and then I'm we'll go from there. And I'll give you yeah, what I feel about them. Y'all can check it out if you so choose. Uh, this first song. It's called Count Me Out. talk about that one that's count me out Ooh, man that one is just a vibe um 
and the message in there is very like it's simple but it cuts to the point and the way that it's like so it's <laughs> so this is a very nice i like this I, I think this is a very good contradiction of message that helps itself so he says the shit so subtly don't count me out because i'll come back Swing it, swing it. So like that, but he doesn't even like st stress that or try to force those notes. It's very like, this is all I am. It's very like right here, you know what I mean? Like no, like effortless, like subtle. It's subtle, that's the word, it's very subtle. But it says, but the words behind it and the message and the, and the uh, emotion behind it is very strong don't count me out because i'll come back swinging i love it i fuck with it and that's all i'm gonna say about that you check it out next one um <clears throat> okay so these next two are probably that was the first one these next two are probably um my favorites and I probably, you know what? I'm not going to play the most popular song in here. You guys can go check it out. But I'll let you know what the most popular song um, that I'm seeing is here um, that you guys can go check out. But these two are probably, I like the most popular song too. So if I had to pick the top three, it would be these two that I'm not gonna play next, snippet next. And uh, the, the most popular song, probably my, my three favorites on it. But this one's dope. This one's Hands Off Me. shit right there girl i'm all about my business yeah you've been on your own mission yeah let your body talk i'm listening yeah <laughs> don't take your hands off me i swear that i can go the distance yeah as the lord to be our witness yeah we don't need to ask forgiveness that's my shit right there just those words like really 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 i don't know this is probably why i fuck with it so much but those words right there really like encompass like how i feel honestly about a lot of things you know i'm all about my business and i'm all about the ones that are on their own mission that too <clears throat> you know what i mean but you all check that out one you all check that one out uh hands off me all right and the last one I'll play is Darling. Darling. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
that one's just like oh that's it i can't i can't because youtube's gonna hate me <laughs> i played that whole shit on repeat man Whew. that is a vibe that's all i can say about that one you need to check it out darling just play that shit on play that shit on like 65 to to 70 <laughs> percent on your volume and just blast that either in your car or your house if you need to a... <laughs> to get in the mood then do that uh because uh <sighs> that's my shit all right Next, we'll do some equipment. Equipment toy? This here. Oh yeah, I got cut short today. We'll do one thing today. This here is something, man. Don't know if I should share this or not. Okay, well, the only reason I'm gonna share this is because if you're really watching this, then you fucking care about me and I fucking care about you. So I'm gonna share this with you. Uh, this is a doubler. It's called um, Voclia. This is a Voclia doubler, okay? So a while ago, a while ago, <clears throat> I saw a Kickstarter campaign for this <clears throat> and I haven't used it too much. I've used it here and there, you know, uh, it takes some getting used to it's something new, but what it is, is, um, it's MIDI for your voice. Basically, if you know what MIDI is, when you play an instrument, say, say something like this <laughs> and you plug it into your uh, uh, whatever DAW you have um, whatever program you use to make music it'll transpose these notes into there in real time give me a second so what this does does the same thing with your voice though so instead of like playing out a pattern you can play with the voice. You can beatbox it, you know? Say something like. <laughs> something like that. But the thing is, you have to, it learns kind of from you. It's like program that kind of learns a little bit from like what you're doing. So it takes some getting used to, which is why I haven't really implemented it so much. Um, and there's lots of different settings in it, you know what I mean? Um, there's so much shit that I don't even know about it yet because it's so new, but I had to hop on it because it was a cool new thing on the market. So, and I thought that maybe it's something cool that I can implement in the future, you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, this is the Doubler Studio Kit um, from Voclea. Voclea, spelled V-O-C-H-L-E-A. Uh, and hopefully, hopefully in the future I can show you guys more about it, like what it actually does. Today I just, like I said, it's a short episode. <sighs> Gotta meet up with a homie. But uh, I just wanted to show you real quick some cool shit that I have. All right, next topic. Hmm. Books. Let me see. Let me see when I got in my Audible. Today's kind of like I said, a rush day. Hope y'all have been doing all right. Um, building yourselves every day. <sighs> okay. I'll do two books. I'll do, last week I did The Power of Now, and I really suggest you guys get that book and read it now. Pun, no pun. Okay, 
This one is called Extreme Ownership. Uh, some of you might have heard of this one. Maybe not. But it's by Jocko Willink and Leif Babin. Um, basically, this book was written by a, a couple of hard-hitting Navy SEALs. Uh, and it's their... You know, they break down what it really means to be a leader and what it really means to take advantage or take responsibility, how, uh, for better terms, of your life and the circumstances that arise in your life. Um, basically, the message, you know, the pure message at the end of the day is you have responsibility it's your like i don't want to say it's your fault which is what it is it's your fault for whatever happens in your life but better translated is you have responsibility for whatever happens in your life and how you react you know what i'm saying of course there are always outside circumstances you know what i'm saying but true leaders always think about what they could have done and how what they did may have affected the circumstances and how how they should have gone about it and what they can learn um to implement into future situations uh it's definitely a book that it's definitely a book that you should read a couple of times um and again it's one of those books where uh the the concepts are simple but it's maybe challenging um, it may be challenging to implement them into your life on a consistent basis. <clears throat> uh, let me see if I can find some of it. Um, so these are some of the concepts from Extreme Ownership. Uh, there are no bad teams, only bad leaders. And there's, this is, uh, um, I'm gonna give you an example of this. They give an example in the book, but I'm gonna give a real life example of this um, later on. Uh, mission clarity, keep your ego in check, act decisively, cover and move, simplicity and clarity, prioritizing execute, decentralized command, um, manage up and manage down. Uh, let me see if there's any more. Oh yeah, and discipline equals freedom. So, those are some of the concepts in the book, and I wanted to go talk about. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to talk about the concept of there are no bad teams, only bad leaders. So in the book, they talk they they give this example of how basically you know certain squads of people may have turmoils or like won't reach certain levels of success that they maybe should have had and that is a reflection of the leadership that is behind that quote unquote squad and things of things things of that nature and they give examples and that goes through all places in life not just you know in the, in the navy or yeah, exactly not just in the navy that goes through all um areas of life but in the book they give an example of these i think it was like you know they do these like drills, like maybe, you know, they gotta like hop over, you know, these fences, you know, then get to the boat and, you know, do uh, get to the next shore and do, do more tasks on the other side. So things of that nature. And there's, and they have to break up into teams, right? And they give examples of like how there's always, there was always one team that was doing way better than everyone else. And there was one team that was just doing way shittier than everyone else. And the team that was doing way better than everyone else on a consistent basis had a great leader and they reflected on the team. They were always in sync. Um, and it was it was a matter of respect, you know what I'm saying? Leadership isn't necessarily about fear, it's about garnering respect from the people around you in an empathetic way. Uh, and then the fucking team that was shitty, obviously they had a shitty leader, always bickering, things like that, and they never got things done. The interesting thing is, they did an experiment where they switched the leaders of the groups, right? They switched the leaders of the groups. So a funny thing happened. The group that was the worst started becoming in sync because of the new leader, and then they became the best group. But even funnier was the group that originally had the good leader 
they maintain that level of greatness and they are always in competition with the leaders of you know next group it was like an a and b like one a and one b thing that's very interesting meaning that those characteristics from the leader stuck with the group in such a good way that uh it changed the way that the new leader also came i think like the group affected the way the new leader went about things like he was starting to do his own his old bullshit and the group was like nah bro we don't rock like that this is what we do and then you know as a as an example as a result of that they were both in competition for the best two groups isn't that interesting now my real world example is drum roll um the clippers of <laughs> Kawhi, but in a, in a weird way uh the, the way that toronto is still uh, you know doing super well in the east by losing i mean after losing their leader you know what i'm saying the same thing Kawhi was probably such a great leader over in Kawhi. Kawhi. You guys think I love Kawhi. I do, but leave me alone. <laughs> Kawhi was uh, such a great leader over in Toronto that uh, those leadership characteristics probably rubbed off on everybody on the team, at least most people on the team. And now without him, they're still doing super well. So that's my real world example. Um, just to show you uh, just a couple things in the book that you know really do translate into real life, um, I would suggest you guys check it out great book um extreme ownership by jock Willink and um and the leaf babbin all right el libro numero dos i think i said that all right I'm, I, that's supposed to be book number two this one like i was telling you guys about last week is uh the, 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 where is it oh yeah unlearn by humble the poet um a hundred simple truths for a better life so <sighs> this book is great for you know creative people and non-creative people in general um and also if you are an immigrant this will probably speak to you as well too maybe not if you're eager but if your parents are immigrants or come from a different country and you're growing up here in the states this will probably speak to you a little bit um but basically uh he talks about he's well humble the poet he's a rapper he's a teacher turned um rapper influencer and spoken word artist um and uh He's, uh, he's usually featured, not usually featured, but sometimes he's on episodes of The Brilliant Idiots. Um, so among his, uh, there's 101 lessons in this book. So like it's 101 chapters, quote unquote. They're very like, you know, short, like you can like, it's, it's digestible. Uh, and the lessons are, some of the lessons are fitting in is pointless activity. Don't trust everything you feel killing expectations uh births happiness comparisons are killer baby steps add up and you decide your worth so that like i said um like anything in life really you know what i'm saying i think you guys are going to start to see a theme of these kind of books that i, I read they're all simple things simple aspects that you can you know think about but to implement them into your life could be a different thing to be consistent about them and the overall message about this book is um you know you gotta learn to unlearn certain things that you've learned in your growth process that don't serve you and that have never served you or maybe that served you at one point but are, have no use to you right now and are actually hindering you and your further growth and keeping you stagnant um and uh yeah it's a. Uh, in this it's summer says in unlearn he opens opens your eyes uh to uh, to our own lives helping us recognize the possibilities that await us and challenges that prevent us from realizing our dreams um with his characteristic honestly honesty and forthrightness he helps shed uh the problematic lessons we've learned throughout our lives that limit us from sabotaging um habits to fixed mindsets to past regrets and relearn yes and relearn new unconventional ways to moving through life 
and uh, as you read it, you know what I'm saying, Humble has a very like jokey, you know what I mean? Um, he's very respectful. He's a very respectful guy, but like he still cusses and he jokes around and makes like, you know, uh, off, off, you know, off, off color jokes sometimes. It's, it, he's good. It's a good read. And it's, uh, it'll, I think you'll, I think it'll, you'll really take some things from it because <clears throat> I definitely did. And it's one of those books, like anything, you gotta read a couple of times. I think seven times. People need to read things seven times before they actually like get it. You know what I mean? Okay, we're moving along. Yeah, and I got speed this shit up because I got, I got go, I got go, guys. I got go. I got go. If you haven't, uh, if you haven't checked out my track calling, go check it out. <laughs> I got go. All right, I'm sorry. Uh, podcast. So this week, what I'll do is I'll talk about, since I just talked about Humble the Poet and how he was on Brilliant Idiots, I'll do Brilliant Idiots and the episode that Humble the Poet was just on. And that'll actually bring me into my next topic. Oh man, this is some great flow, flowing. Okay, let me find Brilliant Idiots. All right, <laughs> excuse me. So they have a new episode from yesterday, but I'll do the one from March 5th. Uh, so, Humble the Poet. Okay, a couple of things from this episode. Uh, they talk about Jack Brewer. <laughs> they talk about Jack Brewer calling Trump the first black president, uh, which was, which was, which was, I honestly think is a joke. They were making some, um, let me just look this up real quick. Uh, he's a, he's a for, uh, okay, former former safety. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So former former NFL player. I, I really didn't know who Jack Brewer was, but uh, apparently he called t Trump the first black president. I'm you know I'm sure he was joking, and uh, you know I don't know how political I'll get on this shit, but. Uh, they they made some comparisons. I was like, okay, well, what's the difference be between him doing that and black people doing that to um, Bill Clinton back in the day? Because we said the same shit about him, uh, that he was the first black president because what? He played the saxophone. He liked fast food, quote unquote. Uh, I really don't know what else. Oh, probably, you know, probably it was the whole, uh, oh, played the saxophone. I think it was on the, I think it was on the Arsenio Hall show. Yeah. That's probably why, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, he got along great with us, got a, had a great sense of humor with black people um, and in general. So maybe that's why, but I think, uh, I don't know. I really don't have too much of an opinion on it. Uh, <laughs> I honestly think the guy was just joking. Uh, people were like calling him like, uh, you know, Uncle Tom, things like that. And people just naturally like to get up in arms and things like that. And I'm all about preserving your energy, you know what I mean? Like, really? Like, okay, whatever. Let him say that. Um, people are going to say whatever they want to say. Uh, all, all that matters is, like, what you feel about how you feel and, like, going out and, and like, if you care enough, voting specifically about what you want to vote for you know what i mean that's all that anything that's all you can really do uh people have these things oh the fucking the government is corrupt and which is true i'm not saying it's it's not it's definitely not doing what it was intended i'm sure to do and now it's all now it's all a popularity contest so all you can really do <laughs> Easier said than done, but this is one of the shits that I get from the book. All you can really do is live um, and change what you can change. So if that means voting, if that means going out and uh, petitioning, then if you feel so strongly about it, then stop putting it off until tomorrow. Do it now. Um, I don't know how I got off to that tangent. Um, <laughs> I don't know how I got off that tangent. But basically what I'm trying to say is stop giving away your energy so much, people. Uh, laugh a little bit and uh, keep your energy for the more serious things. Like, 
actually, this brings me to my next point, which is also what they talked about on The Brilliant Idiots. They talked about uh, the coronavirus. And I'll save that because they also talked about Mike Tyson. And there's a funny thing with Mike Tyson. Um, oh, I gotta end this stuff, guys. Uh, but with Mike Tyson, there was a clip that they played where, you know, he's kind of breaking down because he used to be this, like, very vicious guy. You know what I mean? This guy who just loved tearing people apart. He was great at boxing, but he also just loved tearing people apart. And he's not that guy anymore, you know? He's gone through this change. He's gone through this metamorphosis. But that, and he's in this awesome level in life but it was through it was through all of that which got him to this level in life and it was that was who he was and who he still feels part of him is i think um to this day and since he can't you know he he he, he morally knows that he can't do that anymore but that's still something that he loves to do you know what i mean and he can't do it anymore and Charlemagne makes this really <laughs> i'm gonna let you guys listen to it but he makes this like really weird comparison, which I get, but Sean just makes this really weird comparison that I'm not gonna say here, uh, which it, which basically, uh, if you ever had a, know somebody who has like a phantom limb, basically kind of like that, you know, it's not there. Their hand got chopped off and like they miss it so much. It's like, they, it's like it was there and it's not there anymore, you know? And like they, it, like, they hand helped them do so much but it's not there anymore uh maybe that was a weird example but basically that's the point and that's kind of how mike feels and it's just you know it's a huge it's a humanizing thing to see and i'm sure we've all maybe felt something like that i know sometimes i feel that way kind of about football because i was you know i played lots of sports growing up football basketball track and field all that shit you know um and i don't play anymore I play basketball at 24 hour fitness here and there, but I don't, you know, I don't play no contact sports like football anymore. And I love that shit so much. Like I was even captain of the football team senior year. And I, there's a, there's an all-star game that I, that I got invited to. And at the end of the game, I freaking I cried guys. I cried at the last, at my all-star game. We, we won, but I knew that it, it was my last game ever. And the coach knew and he came up, you know, gave me a hug and told me, he was like, hey, you know, live an awesome life, you know. I, I know that this is something meaningful to you, but always cherish it. Because, you know, other people were putting out videos and stuff for colleges and everything. And and I wasn't, just because, you know, I was on the whole med school path and everything. But I actually, the I, I my plan was to get into UC Davis and try to walk on, if anything, <laughs> and play football there for a little bit to see if I could handle it with classes. That never worked out. That that, that wasn't God's plan. It was <laughs> going completely left. But I'm so grateful. <laughs> um, so, uh, what, what was I saying? Why did I even say all that? Oh, yeah. So that's how I feel about football. So I can kind of really lay in a little bit of a way to Mike, but maybe not in such... A heavy degree so you can check that episode out it's called we had a connection with humble the poet he was on there gave us tidbits and things like that that's the only reason i brought it out all right and yes this is the last couple things the my week and the coronavirus really the nba so the nba shut down guys uh, until further notice about this coronavirus uh like i said last week though i still don't know if it's that serious you know what i mean uh i mean it's serious like i said but i don't know if it's serious to the degree of um of humanity's extinction or you know demise and things like that definitely the definitely the um the fear is real and the and the agitation is real which is why everyone's buying everything up from costco and like <laughs> all the water and toilet paper it's crazy my my homie sent me pictures of like you know target and like my other homie sent me pictures of like uh kmart and not kmart what am i saying uh walmart and uh all the shelves are like barren like ghost town and then when i uh when i was ordering doordash the other night <laughs> the lady told me the lady told me there's nobody out it's so sp spooky uh, and then same thing when I had a meeting with the venue that I'm trying to uh, do something out. Uh, the uh, one of the coordinators told me like it was so weird seeing everyone like walking back from the game. It was like busy, but like like not supposed to be busy at that time, but only but people because people were leaving uh, leaving the game early. 
Um, so it's it's spooky out there. All I can say, guys, like I said, protect yourselves. Wash your hands. You know what I mean? Um, there's so many. Uh, to get if the mask helps you get that, I guess. Like I said, the net the N95. Uh, eat healthy foods. Get enough sleep. Take showers. <laughs> uh but yeah because there's not really because it could happen anyway like i mean like you can get it from anything like somebody packaging your food somebody like sending you something you know what i mean you can get it from anywhere but as long as you're healthy you have a fighting chance like we like if you yeah, if your immune system is shot that's when that's when that's when there's issues but if you do your best you can to keep healthy if you don't jog maybe start jogging you don't have to do much a minute two minutes five minutes around the block just to get healthy get some turmeric uh get some vitamin c and drink lots of water you know what i mean repeat uh that shit that shit will keep you that shit should keep you good um this week what did i do got some got some content done um um that was really it i got a lot of content done this week uh, i worked oh let me tell you guys a story Okay, so like I said, I'm a nurse, and something awesome happened the other day. I was working, I was working my uh, last little 15 minutes of the shift, and a client came home from. He was, he was like, he was one of the ones who went through the game, but they came home early. The client came home. Um, he, went, he went with this program. He came home, uh, and he said, "Josh, Josh." And there's another client there that I work with who also has the same name as me. And I thought he was talking to him. He's like, "No, no, no, it's for you, for you." And I was like, "What? What's up?" And he gave me this letter that was addressed to me. It was addressed to me. This is what he said. Uh, uh, Dear Josh, thinking of you makes me smile because of these three reasons. Uh, you take good care of me. You make me laugh. You cook for me. I hope you have a happy day. And I was not expecting it. And that really, uh, it really, really made my night. So... <laughs> Uh, that's really all that happened this week. Go be awesome. Do something cool for someone else. Um, and uh, spread good energy out there. Protect your energy from bad vibes. Fuck the haters. <laughs> and yeah, see you guys on the next episode. Sorry I had to cut this one short. And uh, tune in next time. Share this one with your mama. And your mama's mama. And your mama's friends. I don't know what I'm saying. Deuces. I got shit to do.